This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. The following is a paid program. The content is provided by the advertiser. WPSL, its staff, management, and ownership are not responsible for the content. Investment involves risk. Prior to making any investment, an investor should meet suitability requirements. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Neither the opinions expressed nor the information provided constitutes a recommendation to purchase or provide investment advice. The material presented is not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person or firm. Securities offered through Centaurus Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. And now, the host of the Team Martech Hour, Joe Martech. Am I on? We're on? Are you ready? <laughs> Wait a minute. What am I on? What do you mean? Are we on? Listen. You are on. No, well, it she no. That's sort deba- of. That's Maybe debatable. you're a little off. I'm you're not right. really right. sure. <laughs> we're on, but we're off. Or we're right. off, but we're on. That's right. right. But we're here. It's the Dan and Joe Show again. Here it is, Wednesday. Also called the Team Martech Hour minus the three of, of the, the team, team members. <laughs> Dan and I and Greg Fasula, attorney. Dan Warren, independent insurance agent, Joe Martek, financial advisor, started doing his radio shows, we think, back in 2004, because that's as far as back as we can remember. And the whole concept was pretty simple. I'm a financial advisor, and my clients would ask me questions I didn't have the answers to. So in my not-too-humble opinion, I feel if you're a credible professional, you align yourself with other credible professionals. Oh, look. Speaking of the devil, holy mackerel, the three musketeers are all here again. Greg Fasul, attorney, just walked in. Are you, are you late because you're yes, pretending you're working or were you out were you out shopping at Walmart? Hold on. Am I late? I'm not that late. I'm not that late. I didn't say that late. So the concept was, again, if, if, if I can't answer the question, I feel if you, again, are a credible professional, you need to align yourself with other credible professionals. So Greg Fasula and I had probably known each other for we don't know how many years, but quite a few years. Quite a few, at least before, a couple decades. Before we started doing the radio shows. Right. And um, the reason I had this affinity for Greg, well, first he's Italian, and they're killer, basically, you know, and if you don't like them, they, they, they hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my that's my that's, girlfriend that's Barb. Your right. I get I get confused. Right. Not all Italians. Not all Italians, right? But the, the concept was was to help my clients and find an attorney that was quote user friendly and competent. Holy mackerel! That's hard to find. This was a really a chore. It's a chore. I tell you, I used to take my clients down to attorneys to do a will or a trust, and before I take them to see this attorney, I would interview the attorney which means meet them. Mm -hmm. And you know how nice people can be when they're not going to make any money and they're not going to take advantage of you and do anything. They're just going to shoot the bulls. And then I bring the client in. Like a regular person. Yeah, like a regular person. (laughs) Then I bring my client in the next day or three, and all of a sudden this person became extremely arrogant, extremely pretentious. Um, Do you think that's what he thinks they expect him to be like? Maybe. I I actually do. There might be some expectation. I think, yeah, most of us, when we say the word attorney, we expect a person to they're be... They're on the clock. Somewhat yes. up. So some, they're a little different. They're is working. it like a doctor's bedside manner? I mean, some of them, I mean, you say, oh, he's awful, but, you know, he's really good, so I go to him. Mm-hmm. Another one, that the doctor is really bad, but you love him, and so you're, do, you're, you're dying, going to visit. They're dying on the table, but you like him. So <laughs> you like to go with. visit. you, you got to find somewhere in the middle there. That was my mother. All she cared about was how good-looking he was and how much he would <laughs> smile at her. And she used to go to this doctor, and you'd love to have the guy as a next-door neighbor. He was a really, really, really nice guy. Mm -hmm. Really nice guy. So my mom's in the hospital dying of lung cancer. She opted not to go through chemo and radiation. So she's got her meds lined up next to the bed. And I'm looking at him, and she's on cholesterol medication. And I said, Mom, why are you taking that? She goes, it's for my cholesterol. I said, Mom, you're dying of lung cancer. You got maybe a month to go. She goes, well, no, doctor said I've got to take it. Nurse comes in. Nurse says, well, if I were you, I wouldn't be taking it because, it's, you know, you're not going to be mm-hmm. here in another month or so. Mom said, no, doctor said I've got to take it. Doctor comes in. 
looks at her and I said, why do you have my mother on Lipitor? And he mm -hmm. opens up his chart. It's for her cholesterol. He says, it's for her cholesterol. <laughs> and I said, she's dying of lung cancer. He goes, oh, yeah, you don't oh, need yeah. to take that anymore. <laughs> By the way, you don't By need the way, that. you could quit Never taking that. that. Then she felt so much better because he gave her permission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, before she got sick with this, um, I used to go through her meds and then I'd find where on, online you can, Dr. Coop, you know, who was a retired surgeon general, he had a site, I don't know if he does anymore, where you could plug in all these different drugs and he'd come back and say, whoop, don't mix this one with that mm -hmm. one, it could kill right. you. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but basically sure. that's what they said. You would think the doctor would do that? I think what happens is... Or and, maybe and the pharmacist? You well, would think. And you know, I've, I've heard, I've heard um, PR people or propaganda people, whatever, say, hey, look, get all your drugs filled with the same pharmacy. Get to know who your pharmacist is. You might go to three different doctors, and the doctors may not have information because you may not give it, or they may not ask it, and they prescribe something anyway. But what they think they're the mm -hmm. only doctor you're seeing? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> yes. Right. Well, anyway, I got to a point I wouldn't let her go see him without me going with her. And you uh, have to be their advocate. Yeah. I mean, I can remember back when I was taking care of my dad, and, and you know, my dad was a smart guy. And one day he goes, you know, I'm taking about 40 pills a day. <laughs> I go, what? Yeah. Are you sick? He goes, I can't believe they have me on all these pills. I said, well, I didn't realize that, Dad. So I took him to uh, Watson Clinic up in Lakeland. We did a complete diagnostic on him and cut his meds in half. Mm -hmm. And he didn't live in that fog of being yeah. over over yeah. medicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you got to be careful. You know, his system was trying to eliminate a lot of chemicals. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. It, it, the whole situation was when when I lead back. We don't have a doctor on our program because I don't think <laughs> one would join us. <laughs> not after they this. Would, they not would. after this show. <laughs> because just like everything else, there are excellent physicians out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who, I can tell you, my doctor. I don't care if I come in for a few, few small little uh, checkup. He'll spend 30, 40 minutes with me. He'll make sure everything's good. And I know people are backing up in the waiting room, but he, he and he always runs late, and I expect that. But he takes his time with everyone. So they're out there, Joseph. I mean, you just got to find them. Are you a concierge doctor? I, I am not, but my wife is. <laughs> Your wife is. <laughs> Technically, Joe, you know, I, I am a doctor. Well, of course you That's are. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but... Thank goodness there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> that, <laughs> that we can see visibly. That's what I asked my son. He's an attorney. Do you want me to call you a doctor? Juris doctor. Goes, no, right. don't do that, Dad. Right. You, you know, an attorney, they call him JD, juris doctor, which they have enough. Well, there's all kinds. You can be a... So, uh, well, who be, made the rule that attorneys aren't called doctors? I don't know. Uh, but they know, are called uh, barristers. They call it a lot of things. Kentucky <laughs> colonels, yes, they're called a lot of things. I, I will say. tell you, I, I guarantee you it was not attorneys. Is that no, because of the type of so. degree? Well, well yeah, but so is, a, a so is a PhD, you know, which, yeah. which yeah, is so make, makes you, exactly. you, you can be a, you can have your PhD, mm -hmm. which clinically makes you a doctor of whatever it might be. It could be right. education. Right. Right. right, and usually they're called yeah. doctors. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I have, I have a client of mine. She's uh, a, um, a doctor of pharmacy. Um, and she never, of course, says. So anything. she's a drug doctor. She's a drug doctor, and mm -hmm. she works in a hospital. And she dimenses, you know, gives out meds for the whole entire hospital. And it's all her responsibility to run the pharmacy for the hospital. But uh, hey, anyway, there's all kinds of degrees, but the medical degree. What was it? it used to be that. You remember the movie uh, uh, Hangover? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and 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 the guys are all going, and the one guy's a dentist. And he says, I'm Dr. So-and-so. And his buddy says, you're not a doctor. You're a dentist. <laughs> well, you know, some people think that. I know. Well, you know vet, vets also, right? Oh, yeah. vets a doctor. Vets. Yeah. yeah. Hey, as an insurance agent, we have all, I have all these designations, yeah. Yeah. as yeah. you know. But I don't put them on my card. Oh, boy. But I had a friend of mine once, and he had <laughs> CJIA on his card. And I know most of the designations. And I go, well, what is that? I've never seen that before. He goes, Cracker Jack Insurance Agent, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> credentials, guys, credentials. So back to how we started the show. It was just like we're talking now. This is how we start. And really it's what we did because we, we knew each other. And the concept was what? How can we help clients, prospects, suspects, people out there answer questions? Um, that you, you know, a lot of people, they come up with a question, they'll ask a neighbor. 
Well, they always have a neighbor who knows. And our neighbor mm-hmm. knows everything. A lot of neighbors know. And, and you know, have we seen a few occasions where neighbors have cost people hundreds of thousands of dollars because of misinformation and cost families untold grief because they didn't prepare properly for something? Mm-hmm. On the yeah. will side, you know it. Oh, boy. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. On wills and trusts, holy mackerel, how many times have we seen it? Mm-hmm. It's continuous, continuous. A lot, a lot of neighborly legal advice Oh, out there. boy. You know the one I love, though? Greg, I love this one. Got a client, not poor, so they subscribe to this legal services thing right? where you pay a monthly thing and mm-hmm. you get legal services. Right. So they want to do a will, right? So they go... <laughs> So the legal services sends them this package. Fill this out. (laughs) They call me up and say, Joe, what the devil is this? And I says, I don't know. Let me look at it. And I said, this is a you're going to answer all these questions to do a will. Why are you doing it this way instead of going to an attorney? They said, well, we joined this service thinking that we would save money. Save money, yeah. And I said, you may save money, but I got to tell you something. I'm not an attorney either, and you want me to help you fill something out. Mm-hmm. I, d- I doubt they're even yes. saving money. Yeah. Well, you know, how, what do they pay? A monthly, month or whatever. You know? Yeah, they pay well, a fee. Here's the thing. It, it's like... I'm not going to go to art school. Right. I'm going to get a paint by number kit, and I'm going to be <laughs> just as good. And just yeah, the same that's, that's a good mm-hmm. analogy because the whole concept was, and back again, Greg, when I said when I would interview attorneys way before we got together was, very often they were competent, but they weren't user friendly, so they intimidated the client to the point the client didn't ask the questions and the attorney didn't ask the questions and very often the document was not done properly. I I had one which was one of my more unfavorite ones. Lady client widow. Mm -hmm. She's got two kids. She's going to leave a couple million dollars. So she goes to an attorney who I happen to have known, did know, who luckily doesn't live here anymore and did a trust and what she did was she said, okay, those kids are to get, when she dies, $25,000 a year um, until the money's gone. And I added it up, and I said, that money's never going to be gone. Mm-hmm. Never. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. But you have no clause in that trust to say what happens to the rest of the money when, really? when, the rest, when somebody dies. Right. Can you imagine the, the, what happens, Greg? I die. Mm-hmm. I'm getting that 25000 a year, and I've got a yeah. million dollars left. And there's no clause or nothing in that trust for that million dollars. Yeah. Isn't that a mess? That's a mess. And, and you'd, you'd have to go to the court. That's and a probate you, mess. Yeah, you would. It's you a court. It's a court. Probate. So it defeated the whole purpose. It defeats the whole purpose. So I trust. looked at it and I said, look, you got to go back and have an end date. Mm-hmm. That when the kids turn 60, 50, pick a number. Because if they haven't grown up by then, what's the difference? You're dead. Yeah. That's right. You know, yeah. let them, you know, let them have it. And they did. She went back to the attorney, and the attorney, um, I, I suggested that she didn't say that it was my idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't idea. know if she did or not, but she did get it changed that they put an end date mm-hmm. so that the money would be would be dispersed. But these are little technical details. So, click. You know, when 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 I worked with a lot of different attorneys, some were extremely good, some were competent, some were arrogant and pretentious. But to put together an attorney that was not only user-friendly but fair, boy, Greg, you know, that was a hard combination until I met you. And, and you know, you that, that, that was a treat. That mm-hmm. was a treat. 340-1590, 340-1590. So Greg Fasula, Joe Martek, and Dan Warren, independent insurance agent. And Dan, boy, oh, boy, well, how critical was it because after Hurricane Andrew hit and it put, like, 10 or 15 insurance companies out of business down in Dade. Um, I mean, what a debacle. That we we still through. feel the, the, res- the results of that. Yeah, job. unbelievable. So having somebody that works with you as an independent agent rather than just work. Think about this. If you work for one insurance company and your insurance company goes bust. <laughs> or takes massive rate increases, which which I've been telling people for several weeks now are on the horizon, and it's starting. It's automobile especially, though. Automobile and homeowners and is starting. Really? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Starting. 340-1590, 340-1590. Then we had to add a 
realtor. Can you believe that we had to do that, Greg? No, no I mean, hard it, to believe. The problem was, all of a sudden, this major recession hits, and the real estate market went bonkers. So the corner of Port St. Louis, Bona Rosa. It is. She's on, yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. Do, you, do you know that you're on the radio, Ms. Victoria, and you're on the corner of a Rosa? In Port St. Lucie Boulevard. Port St. Lucie Boulevard, you know? <laughs> well, the, the reason I'm talking, I'm, I'm over here doing, um, and I'm glad Dan's there because I just gave them your phone number on doing a rental. So we were talking about rental insurance for people that are renting. Absolutely. And how important it is to have that, Dan, in case something happens. You know, we do have a lot of landlords that require it now in their leases. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the landlord needs to be protected, too. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, you want to protect your things. You want to protect yourself in case you're involved in a, in a suit. You know, what if you have a dog and you bite someone? There's all kinds of things that tend Yeah, my husband. <laughs> and a husband, right? And a husband. <laughs> yeah, what if my husband bites somebody? Am I in trouble? You could. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, listen. That was your ex-husband. That's not your current one, Vic. Be careful. <laughs> you're funny. You're funny. Well... How's, how's everything going there? So I'm going to have her call Barbie and uh, get some quotes on, on that. So Absolutely. That's something we can get quickly, right, Dan? We can do it today. Okay. That that's one you can buy You can bind right away, right? I can bind that right away. All right, Vic. Okay. You well, get, that sounds great, get, and I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Get back Thanks, to work. Victoria. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. So here was Ms. Victoria Lloyd, REMAX of Stewart, who happens to be one of the top 100 REMAX agents in the entire world. I used to get a kick out of her. She's, she's the most humble, doesn't have an arrogant bone in her body. And she goes, yeah, Joe, I'm one of the top 100 agents in Florida. And I said, yeah, she's out of 100,000. I said, Vic, there's not 100,000 REMAX agents in Florida. She goes, oh, yeah, look at this thing. It says right here, I'm one of the... I says, Vic, that's worldwide. <laughs> 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 but you know which if you think about it for the whole world to be here in our little part of the treasure coast yep, yep. that's pretty amazing it is her concept is and this girl only has two speech she's either working or sleeping and i gotta tell you i've had her you know she'd be walking down a street in the bahamas or in europe and she'd be on the phone working i mean that's just <laughs> that's just the way she is i think at one time when she when she called mike Pollis, didn't call him, i think she texted him at three in the morning and his wife says, who in the devil is that? And he says, that's Victoria. She goes, uh-huh. <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this Dan with State Farm? State right. Farm, yes. <laughs> That commercial. Right? I, got, I got my khakis on. Yeah, got my khakis on. What are you wearing, Dan? 340 <laughs> <laughs> And then we added Mr. Mike Paulus right about the same time as Victoria Lloyd because the wording that was out on the street when that recession hit that there was no mortgage money available and there always was you just had to know how to get it you know and it was very sad because people you know i, I guess our, our president now uses the word fake news and boy there is a little bit and there always has been um things that you can't rely on and there's so much media coverage plus the internet there's so much information out there that you just don't know what is true well don't you think that most people fall into this trap of having their own agenda yeah so the things that you push are the things that you you perceive to be real and unfortunately you know uh reality is perception you know so what, what i perceive to be true may not necessarily be true but i think it is and it's my agenda and i'm going to push it and that's how fake news starts well you, know, you hit the word agenda when I see an article on the paper and I start reading it and it starts to slant in any direction, then I go all the way to the bottom to find out who wrote it and what their agenda is. Are you like these stories that say uh, the young gentleman, meaning the 19-year-old person with a rap sheet as long as your arm? Yes. You know, or they'll go, the kid, this kid. Oh, it's just a kid. But it really wasn't a kid. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it a full thug. That's fake news. It was a thug. <laughs> well, and and that's and that's what happens. You know, we we get and a, that's spin. We get a joke out of yeah. you know the, on, on the internet about the. Have the, you heard the one where they say he yelled yelled praise be to God before he shot everyone you know, in another language? <laughs> I mean, say what it really is instead of candy coating it. We're all grown ups here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, you know that's just the way the system is today. Bonjour. <laughs> yeah. I've been called a French model too. Got a French model, right? <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> 340 1590. So let me pick on Greg, which I haven't done for a good hey, while. He hasn't been here. It's been so a while. You've it's been, been a saving while. Saving it yeah. up. One of my very favorite subjects in the whole world 
is probate. Probate. Now, when you say the word probate, if you ever say that next to an attorney, watch them start to smile. And then if you say a probatable estate worth over a million dollars, not only do they smile, they start rubbing their hands together. They're thinking about buying <laughs> Anticipation. a Mercedes. Anticipation. Anticipation. So here's my example and why I love this one. Mm-hmm. So I dropped dead, which is going to happen sooner or later. And Probably I, sooner now. It's older. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the attorney's going to put a contract out right. on me, right? <laughs> and I have a, quote, probatable estate mm-hmm. worth a million dollars. And my daughter... Why would you do that to your family? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because, I mean, how, hey, the shoemaker's son, you know, right? That's rare. It's rare, but it, it's... Hey, look possible. at Joe Robbie, Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cost them an, a lot. An attorney... Uh-huh. I know it's okay. hard, hard to believe. It happens. Right? Um, hey, Elvis Presley. Um, well, the Elvis Colonel did good. Elvis wasn't planning on dying. No, but you know, no, <laughs> I don't. If you know when you're going to die, life gets pretty simple. Yeah, but you can he plan was things. what forty? What I was? Yeah, seven, I don't know. But forty something. Either 45, way, yeah. either way, it does hit. Those peanut butter sandwiches finally caught up. Yeah. So here comes, this, right. here comes this. Here comes this probate. Was it Howard Hughes? Um, left a monster estate, and we, I don't think it's ever been settled, and it probably never will be settled. And attorneys are going to be. Well, look at this situation too with Prince. Same yeah. thing, yeah. and mm-hmm. you, they've got family members who are trying to prove that they're family members, and they're going to be fighting until eternity. Well, yeah. the illegitimate kids keep showing up, mm-hmm. you know, forever and ever. So yeah. my my daughter, it's it's rare. I mean, most people, you know, they they have other vehicles other than wills, as far as you know, distributing and. They have accounts where they've named Distributing. Benef- but yeah, since you're not them. very good and you didn't do anything, Because I'm not too bright. What's he going to charge your poor child? So my daughter says, Greg, what's it going to cost me and how long is it going to take for me to get the old man's money? And you say? That depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> and since it's Joe, it's, it'd probably be about double. Okay, only right. Well, she'll say, okay, exactly how much is that? And Greg says... Well, usually I'm going to go by the the Florida statute, and Florida statute, it's like a sliding scale depending on the the size of the estate, the probatable estate, and if it's over $100,000, by statute, 3%. Now, Dan... Thirty grand. Thirty grand. You didn't have to. No, ask. wait a minute. I knew exactly the he's, big he, one. He's smiling again. Are your hands rubbing together? <laughs> he's holding them still under the he's table. Hold, he's holding his hands still, but he can't help but smiling. Now. Then my daughter says, okay, 30 grand you're going to get, Greg, you thief. How long is it going to take me to get the money? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and she'll say, roughly. Yeah, roughly. So, so that is going to depend on what's in the estate, what needs to be done. But for an estate that, that large, it's probably going to take a while. And I mean, uh, like we're you, getting really close to re, almost how, an answer. Almost an answer. <laughs> how long is a while? Typically, estates, you know, six months. Six but, months. But, but get, when you're talking about like, like a million getting, dollar is that probatable like getting teeth estate. out of a hen? <laughs> but you're talking about a million dollar probatable estate, right, I, right. I would think probably even longer. Now, what happens, Greg? It can very easily happen to have. When you have a family or a couple or a single person that has 10 or 15 pieces of income property. Yeah. You know, and, and if they don't put that, I mean, listen, this is one of the biggest arguments in the world mm-hmm. to put a trust together so that yeah. you can avoid that. Yeah. So assuming Joe had a million dollars in rental properties mm-hmm. and now it's going to go through probate. If I'd have done a trust, yeah, right, and I'd have given you the big bucks, twelve hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars, whatever it would have cost. It depends, right? It depends on right. how much work you had to do. Mm-hmm. But then my daughter says, "Okay, Greg, the old man's got this trust, got this stuff in there, no probate, right?" And Greg mm-hmm. says, "Looks like no probate to me, right?" Right. And then she said, "How long is it going to take me to get the money?" That's going to depend. depend too. <laughs> so. So what's what's in that trust estate? What needs to be done with that trust estate? Is, are there properties that need to be sold, distributed? Right. But you can immediately start doing that. You can immediately start paying bills. You can pay in taxes, expenses. And, and it doesn't with, have to go through the courts. Right. right. That's simple. Right. So literally, 
if she's the executor of the state, and let's say I had 10 pieces of property in there, okay, fine, Sherry, you're the executor of the state, and you're one of two beneficiaries, so, hey, you're in charge of that. Those properties start collecting the rents, open a bank account, mm-hmm. do whatever, mm-hmm. and, and or yeah. just automatically, if there's a bank account already set up with the trust, and you're the quote, successor trustee, you go to the mm-hmm. bank and say, the old man's dead, I'm in charge, and show them death certificate, death yeah. certificate, and it's done. Am yeah. I right? Yep. Yeah. Yep, you're so th- right. Now, then Greg doesn't get to rub his hands together and grin because he might have got 200 bucks for that consultation, but that's about it. That's about it. I, I mean, <laughs> it I, w- I would it think, <laughs> I would think that, that she would need a lawyer to to sort that out but but, but you it, know but it's, it's an hourly fee it's but not it's the thirty thousand dollars it's not thirty it's grand. the best option it's yeah, the most reasonably absolutely. priced it gets it gets what you want done done quickly mm-hmm. and there's and your your kids are going through enough grief and heartache as it oh, of is course. so mm-hmm. it does it does the job properly yeah now, well that example when you when you say that that person has rental property you know to me when when a client tells me that then then it's a no-brainer yeah, you, they know, need a you, you should have a trust Almost everybody that are clients of mine that has income producing properties, if they did not have a trust when they met me, they have one now Mm -hmm. Um, because of exactly that reason. It isn't for them, it's for their kids. And what a mess it is if you if you die intestate quote i love that word you think mm-hmm. you think i don't know anything about the law <laughs> i know intestate that's right <laughs> anyway I, i'm not a, a big pusher on trust i, know I, you're I not. mean i i've talked people out of i trust, know yeah um, yeah because they don't they didn't need they don't need one i have a client a husband and wife who years ago put together an a b trust a meaning him b yeah. meaning her mm-hmm. and the reason you did that that was back when the exclusion rate, meaning you didn't have to pay taxes when you died on only six hundred thousand or six fifty, yeah. six seventy five, well, whatever. Six it was. or seven hundred yeah. thousand. So they had a couple million at the time, so they divvied up into two different piles. So in case one died, there was no or very little estate tax. Well yep. now they sold their house, they've got a brokerage account, they got a bank account, and they're living in an assisted living. Mm-hmm. And they look and they said, Joe, we need to change the trust. And I said, let me look at it. And I thought, you know, you don't need a trust. You have nothing even in the trust. Yeah. We have a transfer on death agreement on your bank account. We've got a transfer on death agreement on your brokerage account. Mm -hmm. And we've got beneficiaries on your IRAs. I hate to tell you, your estate was just settled. Yeah, and I've seen people like that also. Yeah. They have trusts. They're they're not funded and and there's actually there's nothing to go through. Nothing that. to even go through it. Yeah, it, e- it's, even if it was. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's an interesting thing with these different vehicles that people don't know. So the concept of what we do is try to educate people. And what Greg and Greg, I'm patting you on the back again because you and I both know guys out there, your your peer group. Mm-hmm. that sell trusts like crazy mm-hmm. and they hold big seminars mm-hmm. and they convince people to do trust that they didn't need trust and they charge them mooches bucks to get those gold embossed gorgeous books <laughs> and maybe in yeah. your past you might have needed a trust yeah and like the example you gave maybe today you don't need that right. so it's good to have that consultation because i know greg has mentioned before that in some cases the will you may have had in another state right. doesn't pass the test here in Florida, and you need to have it updated. Is yeah, and I, I've seen people with wills, and I might have seen them and and years ago, and said that all you need is a will. You don't you don't need a trust. Or, you know you don't have probatable right. property. And then later on, they come back to me. They buy another property. Um, you know, income sure. rentals, and um, I say now, now, now you need to change into a trust. Situations yeah. Yeah. change exactly, uh, and as, you know, life is made up of change. Nothing stays the same. We all know that. Three four zero fifteen ninety three four zero fifteen ninety. So again, the concept of the group very simply was to help people with all these different items, and you know, we've been all of us have been here a long, long time, and hope to die here, just not necessarily soon. I, I hate to be there. You know what really aggravates me is being at the top of the pecking order. Well, luckily, if I die, you're next. There. Someone has to be there. <laughs> <laughs> right. 340 1590. So today, today. I'm, what about today? The boy, our current president, is close to come out with a tax plan. I heard, I heard. So mm. Mnuchin uh, was on this morning and. and 
and I know the stock, Ryan was the on. The stock market's been very happy in anticipation. It isn't just that. The French had their election, which is now going to be another election in two weeks. But the guy that they look to be a slam dunk is a conservative. And this is the change over in Europe from liberal protectionism, um, deficit, is moving more back toward, like in France, they have a 35-hour work week by statute. Now, can you, I mean, telling and somebody. And more vacation each year. Mm-hmm. And well, more taxes every day. This is true. So, that you, you, you know, there's no such thing as free lunches, again, unless you are a politician. But I, you know what I think, Joe, what, I, what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing is French people want a French culture that's been a French culture yeah. for for a millennium and don't want it changed just like American people want yeah. an American culture, which is which is different than French. Oh yeah. American culture is a variety multi, of yeah. multi people in there. But we don't want anyone um, you know, person to able to dominate our culture. And all of a sudden we have certain people who say, Hey, we know if you don't think like us, you're a hater. Well that's not true. I'm not a hater. I just don't have the same opinion that you have. Are those attorneys? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. Those are politicians. So what's happened is in the last couple of three days, you know, the market is soaring in anticipation of continued, quote, growth and fairness. Now, whether it's going to be accomplished is a major, major, major issue. Um, we all hope it does. We hope things happen better for the economy, better for the people in America, better for people on the globe. Well, we well every, every single thing is going to be a fight because the left has decided that the answer to everything is no. So oh, well. we're going to find out. It's going to be everything's going to be a fight. But look. It's, it's always, but it's. But always, I don't know how they can, how how anybody on the other side can argue a tax cut. Well, listen, it's, it's that good, would be for, good Obama. for everyone. I mean, Obama's doing a four hundred thousand dollar speech to to the bankers, and Clinton it's Clinton, not, Clinton, Clinton not only it. got two hundred thousand for his hour, so something's inflation. Getting, something's happening. It's inflation. Good. inflation. Well, you know, hey, look, I I I give uh, Obama how, how much? Four hundred. <laughs> yeah. That was in, on TV today. What is that? The annual salary when he was the president? I don't think it's uh, no, whatever. It isn't that but, high. It, but it is for an hour's worth of work. So you know you got to cut the man some slack. You know, it's an hour it, speech. You know, great. You know that sounds mm-hmm. like an attorney to me. You know, four hundred thousand mm-hmm. an hour. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah I wish. not a bad you paycheck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You don't need too many hours like that. Just one. No. No. <laughs> no. Three four zero fifteen ninety. Three four zero fifteen ninety. So even though. This thing is supposed to come to a head today. I doubt very much because of the system. They'll that have it's to, going to mash it around. They're, they're gonna, it's going to beat it up, and it's going to go on and on. Or more, yeah. You know, we could sell like uh, tickets to the protests that are going to be happening. Yeah, you yeah. know they're going to be there by this afternoon. Well, I mean, it's great to have tax cuts and corporate tax cuts and all that, but but what about the deficit? Where where's that money coming from? You know, here's the key thing, and you just hit it. Mm-hmm. Well, we need to quit giving it away. That's the problem. Well, it's not the mm-hmm. problem. I hate to tell you, you know, and, and let me wear this other hat. 86%, 86% of our budget goes to, not necessarily in this order, entitlements, which are not entitlements. Don't not call entitlements. Social Security yeah, an entitlement. Do not call I'm not calling no, that. I don't, I don't even I'm using, I'm using that call, word. Uh, but it's, in, it's, called, it's, called, it's called Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Mm-hmm. 86%, now I'm not done, defense mm-hmm. and interest. Of which it, interest is yes, but when we write when percentage. we send money to Egypt, how do you feel about that? Now, wait a minute, though. I feel though. bad. Wait I feel bad, too. Now, now, feel bad. Is really 14% of the budget is everything else. Mm-hmm. Health, education. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, so think it's of defense. Of, think no, 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 no. Military defense think is of in how part much of this 86. They're taking. Yes. It's part of the 86? <laughs> oh, that's, it's big time. <laughs> Huge. Part, big time. Huge. So yeah. if they had Our huge. budget for military. If they hadn't stolen my Social Security money to begin with. Right. To pay other things. To pay other things. Been paying since you're okay, kid. and they took my money that was supposed to not be touched, right? And they reallocated. I don't care what they tell me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't. I care. think they should mm-hmm. just end it and give us our money back. They're not gonna. Yeah. They can't. <laughs> they well, can't. Well, sure. Just end it. They can pr- return they, the money. They can print mm-hmm. more money. You know, that's well, it. they borrow more money. They don't print it. <laughs> well, they, first they borrow, then they print it. <laughs> but that, as deficit spending, 
it's going to continue on. It's not going to stop. But I will tell you this, no matter how small the percentage is that we give away and we do silly I things, I don't care how small it is, stop it. Well, and stop, there, the, stop that silly 1% here and 2%. I don't care. If it makes no sense, do away with well, it. And I'm, is, in, I'm even anti-endowment uh, for the arts because I'm saying if the ballet can't bring in enough people, I agree. then I guess we don't have ballet anymore. Well, you know, the reality is this. Didn't we used to have big corporate sponsors? I mean, I'm hearing. And people who were very wealthy who were. Uh, you know, a patron of the arts who did that stuff. That's how it used to be. Right in our own backyard. Are you, are you mean Lake Wobegon should be paid for by itself? Lake what? Wobegon. <laughs> Where is this? It's a show. It's, it's a okay. show on public <laughs> radio. Okay. <laughs> well, you're yes. on radio. Come yes. on. And, and you, <laughs> see, you see the show. conflict. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, I, I, I'm having yeah, a... Yeah, but we, right here in our own backyard, we bring in Jay Leno to make the people laugh, yet the theater is subsidized by the utility company. Really? Yeah, That's when I pay my bill. Yeah, yeah, but the utility company means you're paying for it. I think that Jay Leno should ask less to make people laugh. Actually, I agree. I think, mm-hmm. I think Jay might have gotten paid. I bet he did. You're kidding. See how that, <laughs> hey, listen, I remember see how that works? I remember going to top-notch shows paying 20 bucks when I was in high school. That yeah, was, but mm-hmm. yeah, this, oh, yeah. Because oh, you're so old, let's, let's, let's inflation back, okay, it. Okay, so back, I don't care. Back in na- now, I think I told you this story once before. My middle granddaughter last year, she goes... I want to go to a concert in Atlanta, Papa. I go, well, that's good. Well, you know, how much is it going to cost? Where are you going to Ten go? Ten times that. It was nine hundred dollars. Oh to go no! See Justin Bieber in, in the in the Justin oh, Bieber the front there. Back. Hey, he's got custom cars to make. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, wow. a Broadway show now. You're yeah. not going to get him for under two hundred and fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's just called life. But you know, it, it, it's I've I've said this a thousand times, maybe more, maybe less. Everybody gets paid exactly what they're worth. Because if somebody's crazy enough to pay nine hundred bucks to see Justin Bieber, then Justin pay. Bieber's mm-hmm. worth nine hundred bucks. I suppose so. You know, and that's it. But the government's not supporting him. No. And there lies there the difference. You and go. there lies mm-hmm. the difference. When mm-hmm. it's when it's mm-hmm. government supported, it's wrong. You know, even our liberal attorney Greg, mm-hmm. when it comes into free education He's not a liberal. <laughs> He's a moderate. <laughs> He's a moderate. <laughs> when it comes into Joe. Yes, sir. Since you are number one in the pecking order. Pick up your death certificate on the way out. That's right. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not allowed to kill me when I'm on the air. <laughs> yeah, he must finish this show. <laughs> this was the, this well, was you're a broadcast consultant. You can do that. That's, so this is, yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's part, it of, the, it's part, of, part of the charter right, right now. <laughs> Get up and go. Yeah. That, by the way, was the owner's husband coming in here picking on us, which he felt was perfectly appropriate, which I understand. He has the right. He has the right. But, you know, it, I guess the whole key with what we're doing, and, and you're right, the, the, the current administration is trying to lop away some of the abuses, but on the other hand, they're going to add a whole bunch of other, well, let's call Tri- them benefits. Trillions of, trillions of dollars to the deficit. And they, they say, well, these corporations is going to spur business yep. and, and it's going to take care of that. But history shows it, it doesn't. Well, Did you hear about the wait wall? Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Let me let me give you some history there, Counselor. Mm-hmm. You remember, like, you remember like this guy? Reagan, you remember Bush, this? How when about we Bill had Clinton? The, yeah, Bill Clinton. Now, we wait a had minute. Like that zero answer. deficit. But guess zero what happened? Dogs, guess what happened? House guess what Senate. happened under Clinton? We what? had full employment. Mm-hmm. Now here comes the biggest argument in the whole world. The more people are working, the more dollars we generate. Tax dollars. Mm-hmm. And, Joe, you that's, do know that our government true. has brought in more money recently than it has ever brought in. It just spends more. Key is this. With full employment, mm-hmm. you all of a sudden are generating more and more dollars that go portions not, of. Not enough. Well, well, won't be even close to being well, enough. But it is. It is mm-hmm. much better today than it was a year ago, than the year before, than the year before, than the mm-hmm. year before. And under Bill Clinton's administration, he had full employment, meaning mm-hmm. under 5 under 4%. It became one of these magic numbers. And it was generating more tax revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, and the code was not any really any different than it is today. But we are spending more right. money on certain things that need to be addressed. But mm-hmm. are we going to change Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, or defense? No. Well, Jill, let me, let me jump in here because most of the programs and most of the things that we currently have were not conceived that way. No. They were passed through. And over the last 15, 20, 25, 30 years, Everybody that had a little need, well, this would be a nice thing to add. And what about these people over here who need a little help? And all of a sudden, that program that was designed to 
uh, pay its own way cannot because too many people now want their piece of the pie. Yep. The pie's yep. already been yep. divvied up. So that's why all these good intentions are wonderful, but somebody has to pay for it. And, and that original program was never intended for that, just like Social Security was never intended to pay my prescriptions. No. Nope. But now all of a sudden we want this. And as baby boomers, Joe, we are the most spoiled people. And we're going to want more and more and more out of our government as we get older. And who's going to pay for it? Our kids Well, can. you do. You, I mean, you do by paying taxes. When I retire, I won't be paying taxes. I'm, I'm, but then I'm the next the generation is not earning the same money either, and less money is going to be going there, in there is, less and there less is a as we move on. at the end of the tunnel, and here, here nobody wants to hear this, but here's what it is. Everybody keeps saying, like you were saying, Joe, Social Security is a killer, right? Well, as baby boomers, we're the biggest recipients and will be. Yep. But in 20 years or so, we'll all be dead. That's right. And if you don't replace us with uh, people who currently can't get it but for some reason in the future can get it, then that program won't go away. The problem will still be there. Baby boomers will die off, and that big need will not be but there. But it's because of the baby boomers and the and the large amount of them that the current workers aren't supporting the of amount of money. Well, there's, but we'll be gone. We'll be the, gone. But the code also needs to be changed. They're not generating enough dollars, period. So what happens is, and, and, and I don't care what anybody says, it's, it's like I want Medicare for everybody in this country and stop all of this stuff. But the bottom line is you've got a tax for it. It, there's no Somebody way. Somebody has to pay. Mm -hmm. You got to. You mm -hmm. can't. We can't have free. But forever. maybe people should be self-sufficient, 100 percent. The government shouldn't pay for anything. You know, I know a guy. I like that. I know. I know a guy. His real name is Robert, but he goes by something called Dog or Bull or whatever. But he has more money. He needs to pay more taxes. You know, I think <laughs> Bulldog. I think wouldn't you like to pay more taxes? Absolutely, Joe. You know, why not? <laughs> you know, I want to pay more taxes to put uh, city water in uh, septic systems and do all that for all the people that don't have that city don't water. Have it. Oh, yeah, sure, I want to do that. Of course you want to do that. Luckily, you don't have the money to do it, so you don't have to worry about it. Hey, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> but if, How did I know but that? But if the city wants it, they'll find a way for you to pay they'll for it. They'll find a way for you for to you pay. To pay for it, not for them well, to pay Well, no, I'm paying for the cross town anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You won't yeah. even be here to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I'll be gone because... They're going to put a new cross town up, in, in, uh, up where you're moving, I hear. <laughs> right next well, to your house. Well, no, not... <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I got to put kudos in for... Uh, Miss Victoria, um, we have a pending contract on the house. Congrats. So. Congrats. It didn't take long. Yeah, what happened well, is, for those that don't know, Bulldog and Mary Beth just bought a house just a couple, three months ago, or five or six months ago, however long it was, which Miss Victoria Lloyd got them into. And then, in the meantime, Mary Beth says, hey, we need to move up north near Jacksonville. Whether you like it or not, we're going. And Bulldog says, well, okay, so we sell the house and we're going to buy another one. And he made money on this house already. You, you are slick, man. Good deal. Well, I flipped houses before, Joe, and, you know, that that's one of those things that um, I used to get on the ladder and do it myself. Now I just direct it, you well, know. You, you know, I hate to tell you, you're getting old. Well, yes, I am. But, <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> you know, the good thing is, is that you learn from experience. You know what needs to be done, what it's going to cost, what it's going to take. And uh, I'd go on flipping houses because I think my annual annualized rate of return on this house is going to be somewhere can conservative 15 percent what, I, what, years, I, what, what so. I what i want what i want to see you know because bulldog has become a genius now because he's flipped the last two very well you, know, <laughs> you wait my man I, I flipped a few houses in my day and so was dan and so was greg we didn't always mm -hmm. win yeah, you don't always win <laughs> we right? don't always win but hey timing is everything and timing is good That's for you right, right now hey, i went to closing in 99 and had to take money had to take money yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bulldog, what else is happening good? Oh, well, I, you know, I got I to gotta tell you, ma'am. Um, Greg, you know, if we got to make any changes uh, mm -hmm. in anything that we have done, you know, I'm open. You know, I'm sure that you'd be licensed. Yeah, I mean, so, well, so we're cool. 
Yeah, I mean, you're... Mike Paulus has got my uh, mortgage already figured out, you know, and mounts and things like that. The, so plan, the plan's Marie coming Wall, together. So. Yeah. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Bulldog, when are you moving? Do you know? I got to be out of here June fifteenth, or you know. That'll be here faster than you know, buddy. Hey, it I'm will. telling you, that's around the corner. About six weeks away. Yeah, six weeks. Good. Hey, congrats, man. That's really good. All right, my man. Well, get that. Hey, get that divorce paper now. Get down on your knees and get in that safe and find me those divorce <laughs> papers. <laughs> Hey, look, Joe, <laughs> it was 20-some years ago. It's not easy like yours. You got five, six of them. They only go he back a couple his. of years. Which one I mean, do you want? Which I, one do you I, want? You which, can which, drag which, yours out of the computer. I can't <laughs> do that. Hey, I got divorced before they invented computers. How many times before? <laughs> <laughs> Look at your, fr- your Look fingers at, on your hands. Ask I'm, him I'm, how many times he's been married. He knows. That's how many I'm times he's been divorced. He, he <laughs> I've, I've given it up. I've given it up. I'm too old. Bulldog, tell Mary Beth says hi. I said hi and uh, keep me on the loop and we'll talk to you irregularly. Thanks, my you man. You got it, Joe. Bye. 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 340-1590. 340-1590. It's always a good idea to hold on to those certificates. You know, those, the ones they, that they are may important. come in handy. Well, you know what you know what the reason is, and this is a subject. Um, when you have a pension fund or an, a retirement account, mm-hmm. and now you want to roll it away from the employer because you no longer work for them. Right. The employer says, okay, are you married? And mm-hmm. you say, yes, okay, fine. We want your wife to sign and agree to move that pension fund the way you want to do it. And if you say, no, I'm divorced, they go, okay. We want to see the divorce papers to mm-hmm. see if she gets a portion of your retirement well, you yeah. in the divorce. And you lied. Yeah. In the divorce. And if you put down single and you lie, it's only fraud. Mm-hmm. Nothing serious. Oh. You just go to jail. It's not, not a big deal. <laughs> you know, three square yeah, meals a day. <laughs> <laughs> point, point is, if your ex-wife finds out you lied and she's due some money, I guarantee you there's mm-hmm. going to be some hell to pay because that's just the system. Are you speaking from... The- Experience, Am I Joseph? speaking from experience? <laughs> I'm so experienced it's scary. But what I'm trying to say is that literally these these. In fact, I've got a client right today, um, husband and wife, and she worked for a long, long time, and she's gone for ten years, and she's got this retirement account, and we've been trying for three months to get them to roll it out. You know, I call it the golden rule. He who has the gold rules. Well, That's right. It's a retirement account, and the paperwork to move it. The biggest single one is we need a notarized statement from your spouse. Who's dead. And if he's dead, we need a death certificate. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you were divorced, we need a divorce decree. What if they're just separated and that person, they don't even know where they they live anymore? Well, here it is. If they're separated and they're still married, Mm -hmm. that spouse has to sign. Right. If that spouse is not available, this is not an easy system. No. Um, this may have to go through court and have the court come back in and say we tried everything in the world to find the spouse mm-hmm. and we can't find the spouse and this might take six months. Who knows how yeah. long? Great, great. Yeah. And the, lawyers get paid. And lawyers get paid to do it. But here comes the problem. This there's and, and Greg, in defense of you, there's no other way to get this accomplished except the right way to do it. Through and court, that, yeah. it's illegal. Now, is that yeah, because you've exactly. made your spouse the beneficiary? Not necessarily. It's or just because you have a spouse. In right. in almost every state, you know, anything we ac- we accumulate during the course of our marriage mm-hmm. is, is to yeah. be shared. Is that right. like dower rights? Is well, that there, what there that's are dower, right? yeah, there are dower rights. There are elective share. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Point is, here comes the law, and the law is what it is. You're not going to change it just because you don't like it. Um, you know, it is what it is. So you're stuck with these circumstances. So literally, if you're going to get divorced, get them to sign it first. <laughs> would you negotiate that in the divorce? To no say, kidding. Hey, if you're hey, smart, you would. Give me back the right to my retirement. Well, let me and tell you, you don't you give the, it back. I'll give you the dog. In, in, yeah, in, in the Deal. divorce decree, you agree on what you're going to get. And right. if you don't agree, the court agrees for you. I mean, because you. you may be in your 30s when you're doing this divorce, but you're not going to be, you're going to be down the road when you go to collect this retirement. Well, wait mm-hmm. a minute. It's only what you accumulated during the course of the marriage, not okay. afterwards. Unless you're stupid yeah. enough to agree to give her what comes afterwards. Yeah. Which, wow. I mean, I imagine. All the growth. I mean. Some that, people, they, they buy homes and, and just one spouse's name oh boy and and that's that's going to be a problem too if if they separate and or or you know not necessarily divorce but that spouse wants to sell that homestead 
you know, it's not it's not a valid sale. Is it better than to have your home in a trust? Well, here you comes the yeah. names on it. If yeah, you don't have both, names. both look at yep. even if it's in a trust, which we had literally, I had a client, husband and wife, bought a house, paid for them. They put it in the trust, and the attorney that drafted the trust said, hey, we're only going to put that house in the trust when one of you dies. And now we know the answer to that. Dan one, and Joe. I said, hey, that's because that's a greedy, mm-mm. and <laughs> Greg says, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Depends. So he what happened is reasons. the spouse died, and he, she comes to me and says, hey, Joe, the attorney wants to put the house in the trust. And I said, hey, come on, I'll take you down to the courthouse, and we'll just add it up and buy me lunch Mm -hmm. cheaper than going to the attorney we get down there can't do it why well your house your half can go in but your deceased husband's half you can't have and she goes why because it didn't say on the deed husband and And wife wife. yeah Yeah. it could have been joe and greg own a house Mm -hmm. my half is mine his half is his i die if it doesn't state joint tenants with rights of survivorship my half goes to my heirs right and or if you had bad right. kids who want their half and yeah, money. Then well, that's luckily, a problem. Yeah, the luckily, sale sign goes up fast. Yeah. Yeah, luckily, they, the kids... They all, it becomes a duplex. <laughs> well, they, what, they, the kids had to sign off, and so mom could have yeah. her house. Yeah. They all cooperated. <laughs> they did, but what if they were stepkids? Right, they weren't her I kids. literally had a case like that down in Palm Beach County where there were multiple pieces of property. And mm-hmm. they're going to want their half. And they did, and in order to get it, the spouse, in order to get her portion... Mm-hmm. had to do all the work so it's a good idea to check your your deed oh um, boy because I, I just saw a deed with with three people's names on it husband wife and mother of one of the the of the, uh, of the uh, wife no, she, mother probably gave up the, gave the money in it probably to get the house probably in the beginning, yeah but but she died oh. and and of course now you have probate because you just have two people's name on there there's no right of survivorship, no right of survivorship. See, and part of that home then could go to one of their sisters yeah. well it, it well le- yeah <laughs> luckily in this situation there was only the one child wow mm-hmm. literally what happens is and that's exactly what happens you know if i die and i've got five kids my estate if i have nothing will be probated and it has to go to those kids i mean that's just the way the system works Mm -hmm. Uh, if if i want to eliminate a kid tough too too bad now yeah you know i've seen some really tough situations oh man because because of no will no kidding and if you want certain things to go to a certain child and it's not done who knows where it's going to go you don't know you can control from the grave but you have to do it right three four zero fifteen ninety three four zero fifteen ninety one minute I figured I was, when I was looking at you, I figured you, you'd, you'd come in there and chime in and say sooner or later something that wouldn't be make me happy. Now, how come it says 58 of them? Because That's that wrong. loses time. It's oh, just, you know, no. old electronics. It's, it's old. Hey, speaking of money, I'm still, even though the market's been soaring, and I had, I've had some calls lately about people saying, Joe, the market, and I'm saying, hey, look it. I'm not even going to tell you what to happen, what's going to happen to the market. We've got so many things going on right now. I don't have a clue. Individual stocks, yes. Dead instruments paying 5 and 6%, yes. A variable annuity contract where the insurance company comes in. The only thing you have to know is which insurance company and their ability to pay. The key thing is this. There are investments out there that are relatively solid or extremely solid. You can always take risk, but I'm into the non-risk phase right now because I'm very worried about what's going to happen. And I think we've been told to leave. We've been told we've got to go. <laughs> Until next week, goodbye. You've been listening to the Team Martech Hour. The Team Martech Hour is a paid program. The content was provided by the advertiser. WPSL, its staff, management, and ownership were not responsible for its content. Investment involves risk. Prior to making any investment, an investor should meet suitability requirements. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Neither the opinions expressed nor the information provided constitutes a recommendation to purchase or provide investment advice. The material presented is not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person or firm. Securities offered through Centaurus Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. Tune in again next Wednesday at 11.05 for the Team Martech Hour here on WPSL 1590.